Hey guys, Rich Oldner here and welcome to the channel. It's time to pick force induction for your 3800 V6. What do you choose? The factory M90 supercharger or a cheap GT45 turbo? I mean, they're both awesome. They both make plenty of boost, but one of them makes a lot more power. In this video, as promised, we're going to compare the factory Gen 5 M90 supercharger to a cheap eBay GT45 turbo. But before we do that, I'm going to show you what happened when we stepped down in pulley size on our M90 supercharger. We went from a 3.0 pulley down to a 2.6 inch blower pulley. I'm going to show you what happened both the boost and power when we spun the blower a little bit faster. We're then going to compare that combination with the 2.6 inch blower pulley to the turbo. We're going to run them at the same boost level, at the same power level, but a different boost level. Then we're going to crank up the turbo. I'm going to show you charge temperatures. There is so much data here. Then I'm going to compare the turbo combination to a compound turbo blower setup that I ran previously that made lots of power. I'm then going to compare the turbo setup to a blower nitrous combination that made even more power. Lots and lots of data. Let's get going. To illustrate the difference between the turbo and the M90 supercharger on our 3800 V6, we need to take a look at the highest power output that we achieved with the M90 supercharger on our V6, and that was actually run with a 2.6 inch pulley. I want to show you what happened when we upgraded that pulley. So this was our combination. We had a stock L67 short block. We had ported heads, which really didn't uh, improve the power. We had our ZZP NIC can, which is a 507, 220, 230, and 112 degree lobe separation angle. We had the Gen 5 uh, M90 supercharger and stock throttle body. It had a three inch pulley and we also had an air and water intercooler and the, the tubular headers on this combination. So run with a three inch pulley, our combination produced 427 horsepower and 403 foot pounds of torque. And I wanted to show you what happened when we upgraded to the larger pulley. This is what happened when we put the 2.6 pulley in place of the three inch pulley. And remember all of this is run on E85 and we also had the air to water intercooler. Run with the 2.6 inch pulley, we produced 448 horsepower and 434 foot pounds. And this was at a peak boost of 12.1 pounds of boost with that 2.6 inch pulley. Also note, here's a photo. I had to uh, machine down or grind down the snout to get this pulley to fit because the inside diameter is smaller than the outside diameter of the snout. So now that we know this is the highest power level that we achieved with our M90 supercharger, let's take a look and see what happened when we added our turbo. And here is one of the turbo runs that nearly matched the power output of the highest power that we achieved with the M90. So we have 448 horsepower for the M90 and 458 horsepower for the turbo. But here's the thing. With the blower, we made 448 horsepower at 12.1 pounds. With the turbo, we made 458 horsepower at 9.2 pounds. So we made 10 more horsepower at three pounds less boost, but that doesn't tell the whole story. If you take a look at the power curve, and, and this would be even more evident when you were in the car behind the wheel, if you take a look down here below 3,500 RPM, we have a difference from, uh, going from 363 foot-pounds with the turbo to 418 foot-pounds with the blower. So the blower is making a lot more boost down low, is much more responsive. But in all fairness, we wouldn't use an 800 horsepower turbo on this combination to make only 458 horsepower. We'd use, we'd use a much smaller turbo that would be much more responsive. But still, the supercharger is going to be more responsive when you just nail the throttle than the turbo is. So you get a lot more low speed power. So there's always that kind of trade-off. Yes, the turbo is more effective and makes more power on the big end. And if you size it properly, you can get more response. But it's going to be hard to beat the response of a root supercharger. Let's take a look at some more boost levels. 
Now that we've illustrated what happens when we kind of match the power outputs at the different boost levels of the two combinations, we made 458 with the turbo and 448 with the supercharger, although the turbo did it at three less pounds of boost and it made a little bit more power on the top, but you can see the supercharger was much more responsive down low. But the question now is what happens when we run basically the same boost with these two combinations? What happens? What's the difference in power? And the closest I got was we ran 12.1, 12.2, pounds with a supercharger and we ran 12.6 pounds with the turbo which is as close as I could get it but running 12.6 pounds the turbo produced 534 horsepower and 488 foot-pounds of torque which gives us a difference of 86 horsepower now it would be a little bit less than that probably about 10 or so less than that if I exactly matched the boost level took a half a pound of boost out of it but you can see it's a sizable difference in power. Now, right away, a lot of guys are going to go, oh, well, that's all the parasitic loss associated with driving a blower. That's what the difference is. Well, that's a big part of it. But also, it has to do with one of the systems, the turbo, being much better at processing air than the supercharger does. And we're going to show you what's going on here. If we take a look at the difference in charge temperature. So if we get rid of, if we get rid of our stuff here, we're going to take a look at temperatures. So we'll look at the inlet air temperatures, both the starting and ending temperature. Now remember, both of these had air to water intercoolers on them. And so this is our, this is our temperature curve. We're starting out, this is with the supercharger, we're starting out about 97 or 98 degrees and rising to a peak of 131 degrees. And again, this is after the air to water intercooler. We're running ambient dyno water through it. This is with the supercharger at 12.1 pounds. Here is with the turbo at 9.2 pounds. <laughs> and I'm going to move myself up here just a little bit so you can see. We're starting out um, at 86 degrees and we're only ending at 88 degrees. So run at the same power level, we have a lot less charge temperature on the turbo combination. We have less air going in and we have much less air temperature going out. Here is what happened when we ran the same boost level. This is at 12, actually 12.6 pounds. It's a little more boost on the side of the turbo. But again, we're starting out at about 86 degrees and, and I'll move up a little bit, but we're, and we're only ending at 93 degrees. So we have a dramatic difference in the charge temperature, which shows what's going on with the effectiveness of these things as air movers, basically. And this is why the turbo is one of the reasons why the turbo is so much more effective. So when you combine this, the lower charge temperature, better at moving air, and the big change in parasitic loss, that's why we see such a dramatic change in the power difference between a supercharged combination and a turbo combination. Let's take a look now at why I turn the boost up even further on the turbo. After running all the testing comparing the 2.6 blower pulley combination with the turbo, I'll show you why I wanted to turn the turbo system up even though I didn't have any ring gap or I hadn't checked the ring gap, I didn't have head studs in it, I didn't have uh, MLS gaskets, we didn't really prep it for any big bang stuff, but still I wanted to get to a certain level and I'm going to show you the reason why I wanted to do this. So this was our combination with a 2.6 inch pulley that made 448 horsepower, but this wasn't the most powerful supercharged combination that I had run on the dyno yet. So what I wanted to do with a turbo combination is exceed all of the others that I had done. And one of those was actually a compound system, but it wasn't a modified version. It was actually a stock. I'll go ahead and show you the power curve here of our compound system. So the compound system made 478 horsepower and 465 foot pounds. It was at a fairly high boost level. It was 22 or 23 pounds. We were running the supercharger with a stock 3.8 pulley. This was actually an L32 combination and it was a stock cam, stock blower. Basically the motor was stock from the wrecking yard and we ran the supercharger on it. We ran on E85 and then I had this same turbo kit, the same GT45 turbo with the air to water intercooler blowing into the supercharger. So I was just demonstrating what a compound system does. We weren't trying to maximize the power output, but in this supercharged combination, it had made more power than we had done on our fully modified version, mostly because it had the turbo helping it. So it was 478 horsepower, but even that was not the most powerful supercharged combination that I had produced. And I wanted to better all of these with the turbo combination. So here's the uh, most powerful supercharged combination that I had. 
And you can see there's a spike up here at four or 565 horsepower, but it really settled into around 532 or three horsepower. This was when I ran a three inch blower pulley and the modified, it had the smaller comp cam in it and a stock head, but it also had a good shot of nitrous. We ran a 52 nitrous jet and a 28 fuel jet. And so supplying that kit increased the power output by 130 or 135 horsepower on our supercharged combination, it picked up a lot of power, but this was the most powerful supercharged combination that I had. So this was the benchmark. So when I was doing the turbo testing, even though I hadn't done anything to prep it for the big bang stuff, I wanted to exceed this number. So what I did is while we were running the turbo, on our modified 3800, we just turned the boost up. So first, after running uh, the 12.6 the pounds that I showed you here, we turned the boost up. First to 13.7 pounds, and then we were getting close because we were we were 571 horsepower. So we had exceeded the the peak power number of our blower and nitrous combination, but that wasn't quite enough. We hadn't exceeded the torque number really here. So let's take a look. I turned it up even further. And we went up to basically in one atmosphere of 14.55 pounds. And then we exceeded all the numbers produced by the supercharged and nitrous combination with just adding a single turbo to our modified version. 613 horsepower, peak torque checked in at 556 foot pounds of torque. So we might have been just a smidge shy of the really peak torque number, but this combination did really well and, and did it, as, as we said, at 14.55 pounds, basically one atmosphere. We had more than doubled the power output of our NA combination with the heads and camshaft and NA intake manifold. That's why the turbo works so well, and I hope this is a good comparison of a turbo version versus the supercharged version. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, I hope you learned something from this comparison between the M90 Supercharger and the GT45 Turbo. First off, if you're looking for maximum power, really, there's only one choice. The Turbo is always going to make a lot more power than the Supercharger, but really, that's not the whole story. As I showed you, when we set them up making roughly the same power, now the Turbo made a little bit more at the peak, but if you look at the other end of the RPM scale, the supercharger had a lot more boost response and a lot more torque, and therefore probably would win that acceleration contest if the two combinations were actually drag racing. It would be a lot more fun. That's the nice thing about a positive displacement Ruth supercharger, is you have immediate boost response, which you don't have with a turbo. Now, again, if you want to make lots and lots of power, a turbo really is the way to go. And honestly, in defense of the turbo in this situation, if I was doing a turbo combination at that power level, not only would I pick a much smaller turbo than the one that we use, because this one is capable of maybe 800 horsepower in this combination, and we are only making about 450. So I wouldn't choose that turbo. I would choose a much smaller, like a GT3582 or even a 3076 to get a lot more boost response. But I would also choose the Long Runner factory aluminum intake manifold. The Long Runners would produce more low speed power. I'd have even more boost response, and it would be a much better combination. But still, it's not really going to compete as a turbo to the immediate boost response offered by a root supercharger. So if that's what you're looking for, that's what you should get. If you want to make maximum power, there's really no other choice. Get the turbo. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More testing coming up.